oriental beauty is one of my favorites. We just love Taiwanese tea. This is real Taiwanese food. Many people have come over and told me, oh no, I, I don't like it. You, you need to change it to Taiwanese taste. Um, but then if I did that, would it be English? No, this is authentic. And there's, there's a British person and he's really eager to spread his culture to foreigners when they come to Taiwan. Um, he definitely will want to make a 100% pure British dishes for Taiwanese people. How come you liked Indian food? Because over 30 years ago, that must have been very different in Taiwan. Like, I think no one in Taiwan, even people in Taiwan now have no idea about Indian food. The Taiwanese consumer, they love mousse. Very important room. Okay. Magical room. Yeah, well, maybe like a magical room, but this is a very important room. To make fine food, if you want to good food, you need to have good ingredients. This is something which is special. And the bento boxes are now being delivered onto the train. Today we are in Tainan trying this so amazing burger. We usually associate tea being grown in Asia. But one successful tea grower in southern England has been growing tea for over 20 years. He recently came to Taipei to visit a tea house. We're here today to learn more about how you drink tea in Taipei and hopefully exchange some great ideas and bring some British tea to you. Look at that, beautiful. And then these gorgeous packs of tea, so functional but also good looking. It keeps the tea really fresh. The silver tea bud, wow, that's such a rare tea. You just don't get these in very many shops it's great to actually come to a specialist tea shop and then look at this look at that you can actually get your hands in there and pick out individual tea leaves and the smell wow this is just such a treat arthur to actually be in taipei with you looking at all these authentic tea wares i mean this isn't china this is like china plus this is so great to be in a tea culture one of the best in the world and down in cornwall where we grow tea ourselves at tregothnan we love looking at all of this because it's by taking your national tea drink, we've adopted this, we now make, with China clay in Cornwall, we make all these lovely things, all for the enjoyment of tea, which is, as you know, the world's number one drink. So Meso Zhao has been teaching me about these delicious teas, and re Oriental Beauty is one of my favorites. We just love Taiwanese tea, it's so sweet, it's delicious. So these leaves, Meso, are just incredible. Look at the quality of them. and. What I, what I love about these leaves is just the quality of them, the little hairy tips and the, the aroma. Wow, it's so good. Mm, some of the best. And what I'm really excited about is that we've, in Britain, have taken your national tea drink. We've made it our national tea drink and now we bring that exchange of cultures back and we're going to make tea the most popular drink in the world. So cheers. Today we are going to visit Taman typical bakery and Taiwanese typical restaurant. So this place opened since uh, 50 years ago and uh, they're selling traditional Taiwanese uh, bread cake bakery. So this is with uh, sesame seeds. This is uh, uh, with the red bean. So this one, Chinese burger with its regular flour. Okay, they have uh, more than 15 plus kind of bakery to sell every day. This is typical Taiwanese bakery. So this is all kind of food you can find every place in Taiwan. We are going to typical Taiwanese restaurant called Auntie's Place restaurant. Okay, yeah, all the students around here, they, love, they enjoyed it very much because the price was very acceptable and also it's a grandma's test. Thinking tofu with dark, dark blood is number one hit. Yeah, it's a little bit spicy. So we're going to try this one later on. Put the hot water to cook the noodles, then put the dark blood. This is typical lunch for the Taiwanese cuisine. All right, so this is the meat roll, the stuffing, right? So this is a uh, chicken feet without a bone, slightly spicy, 
pork liver, pork ear, and some uh, steel vegetable with uh, dried fish. So now, this is interesting part. Actually, I haven't ate stinking tofu in my whole life. I never have it. Because, you know, stinking tofu is stinks. But I could have a good try because she used her mom for the recipe. So I give a big bite. All right, let's see. It's a uh, need courage, right? Which is, oh, not that hot, not that stinks, but uh, it's a uh, very interesting flavor. This is real Taiwanese food. Uh, we started making sausage rolls, and from there, you know, we took the next natural step in the the category of sort of the traditional British meat products, uh, and so pies were there. All our pies are made with hot water pastry. Now, in England, most pies nowadays are made with short crust pastry. Uh, what I found, the flavour is different. I mean, we're, when you use a pork lard, you're using something with real flavour to it. And this pastry is the most tastiest pastry you can get. So a lot of our, our, our customers always come back to me and say, it's about the pastry. So um, when I was a kid, a bit like you, Arthur, you know, the most famous pie was the, uh, was the steak and kidney pie, correct? You know, um, and, and it was all about the steak and kidney pie when you were growing up. But nowadays, you know, in England, what I've heard is, um, you know, people aren't doing it anymore, you know, because it's kidney. But to me, that is the epitome of a British pie, a steak and kidney pie. And again, out here in Taiwan, you just can't find steak and kidney pies. So steak and kidney pies, they didn't exist, you know. So um, this is one of our favourite pies, and it's fantastic. Um, this is the steak and ale. Uh, this is made with Guinness. So it's a steak and Guinness pie, uh, very, very meaty. We, we don't use small chunks of meat. We use big chunks of of chuck steak. So this is Australian chuck steak that's in there. A lot of foreigners, they come to Taiwan and they try and adapt to the local taste and they kind of destroy the original flavor they had. Right. You kept really to the English there, there, taste. No, that's a good point, Arthur. You know, there, many people have come over and told me, oh no, I, I don't like it. You, you need to change it to Taiwanese taste. Um, but then if I did that, would it be English? No. This is authentic. This is the real McCoy, as they like to say. I, I'm, I'm not changing it. I cannot change it. You know, it, it's, it's not the right thing to do. Because then the Taiwanese people will not know the real English food. This is real. This is the real McCoy. If there's a British people, there's a British person, and he's really eager to spread his culture to foreigners who come to Taiwan, um, he definitely will want to make a hundred percent pure British dishes for Taiwanese people instead of only for earning money. If the if the main reason for him is to spread culture, if he won't care that much about the money. On the other side, if it's only a Taiwanese people who want to earn, want to earn money, he opened a restaurant. It doesn't matter of if he was taking a 70% of British style or even 50% uh, of British style. People don't know what the 100% Western food feels like. So they're getting used to a mixture of the Western and the Eastern food style. So they're accepting a a Western food, which, it, which should not be called Western food. We've come off the seafront and we've gone more into the inner heart of Dan Shui. And where, what, I've, what I'm showing you now is a shop that is special for a soya bean curd called um, Douhua. Yeah, Douhua. Now, um, I know this sounds weird, but it's actually 
for me, this is the tastiest dessert you can probably get in Taipei. It's traditional, it's tasty, and it's actually pretty healthy as well. But this shop has like, okay, four different variants, and it was actually the first shop to make it come about okay. in Dan Shui mm -hmm. and Original in the whole of Taiwan you don't get many places like this at all. With regard to Dohua, the origins apparently go back to ancient China, the times when they had a, like something called mapo dofu, a, a certain tofu dish with like rice and well I think it would have rice and like this tomato stuff like inserted in it so lots of tofu dishes and strange enough that savory dish seemed to have turned into this dessert. It tastes just like how I remember it and here it's really soft. It just melts in your mouth so it's pretty good for what it is. You wouldn't expect that with a dohua. I eat a lot of dohua in Tainan as well and this dohua here in, in Danshui in Taipei is nothing like what you can get in the south. This is completely different. Dohua is available from even convenience stores all around Taiwan but you really need to go to the traditional store to try and get the traditional, get the traditional flavor, get the fresh variant and, and really converse and see what the real people are like. Like, you don't just want to live your life in 7-Eleven getting these products. Really, come here and try it. Bar is a meeting place for people, young and old, uh, all go into Irish bars to communicate. In particular in the west of Ireland, uh, it comes from the olden times when there was no electricity in the houses. People went usually to meet in the local pub. I see. And they talked and they played music and uh, it was a meeting point and the communication and that uh, uh, to this day uh, is the Irish bar. In Ireland uh, you have a couple uh, classical drinks. The most important drink is the Guinness. Guinness was born in Ireland in Dublin yes. uh, and uh, since uh, 1600 and something Okay. So uh, Guinness is really the centerpiece of Irish drink. So what's the easy to bring the Irish culture to Taiwan? You try to find common denominators, uh, the culture, via the culture, uh, and uh, uh, via music. When you feel sad, uh, feel down, when you listen to Irish music, you will get better. So always uh, this music makes you active. The German choice is uh, very kind for, for us to play the music here. Chinese music instruments have some similar like uh, Irish music instrument. For example, uh, Chinese bamboo is similar with the team whistle play. So this time I try to ask the Chinese, Chinese music player to play the Irish music and they use Irish style to play the, in their instrument and uh, try, uh, maybe have a different sound but I think uh, they can match each other. Coming into our Irish bar you don't need to travel to Ireland. You have a little bit of Ireland in our Irish bar. Chicken masala has grown to become the number one dish in the UK. What we have here is an actual Indian shop where you can buy lots of spices. And this is not in England, this is in, and it's not in India either, it's in Taipei. Taiwanese have started to like more Indian curries. Before, in the starting, they used to like uh, Taiwanese curry, uh, I mean to say Taiwanese or Japanese curry. So when they started uh, eating uh, Indian curry, they started to like Indian curry more because of the flavor. You know, Japanese curry is mostly like they are, they are like sweet in flavor and like uh, not, not very spicy. The Indian curries is more of like uh, spices, aromatic spices. What do you think is a real curry? There are many versions, but uh, the most authentic is the Indian curry, like uh, which started from India. 
and like it spread all around the world. Indian curries, maybe some some people want to use, most want to do some fusions. In India, like they have many kind of fusion uh, dishes. Like they they can have like uh, something like uh, curry pasta. <laughs> they have uh, something like a uh, pizza with curry flavor. Those things or something like. Uh, uh, Thai, Thai and Indian curries, like uh, fusions and kind of things. Most of the uh, customer who comes here, they used to say they used to have Japanese curry before, but they don't like the sweet taste of the curries. So when they had it in the restaurants, they they felt like the Indian curry is more healthy than the Japanese curries. Tell me, when you were in India, did you ever have was Japanese curry ever in India? No, I never seen any Japanese curries in India. How did you feel when you tasted your first Japanese curry in Taiwan? Like uh, it was kind of, oh, my mood went off. This is an Indian snack that I'm going to introduce to you. This is actually an Indian naan type of kebab. And what's good about it is that you can eat it everywhere you go and you can eat it, eat it at any time. Now this has become more recently it's become more and more popular especially in Taiwan this is Pakistani food you know I mean Taiwanese people like Thai curry and uh, we are trying to uh, serve the real authentic taste of Pakistan curry you know it's uh, actually the real curry is the combination of vegetable and a lot of spices and we are even making our own spices we are grinding our own spices it's not just like we are buying, uh, you know, the ready-made uh, spices and just cooking. So kebabs are many kinds of kebabs, like yeah. uh, from Turkish kebabs or uh, from Middle East or from Pakistan or even in India, you know. So I think it's just, it depends on how you cook. Cooking is an art. It's just like, it's my passion. I like cooking. The dough of roti and chapati is very, very simple. It's just uh, three ingredients, flour, water, and a little bit salt and a little bit oil. Everything is handmade. I can taste the spices. That's the first. This is this is actually a chicken wrap, and um, I can really taste a lot of chicken. I can taste everything in it. It's like and wow, this is not what I expected. This is actually much better than a normal wrap that I'd have. And now let's go to an authentic Indian curry house. It's called Tandoor. Tandoor Indian restaurant. And how long has it been going for? It's like uh, more than 31 years now. So well. Oh really? Yeah. Compared to Japanese curry, mm -hmm. this looks nothing like it. This is absolutely, it's completely different. It's Indian, that's why. What is the difference then between a Japanese curry like from your view? I don't find like authenticity. Yeah, like you know, Indian has like different spices. They use like all sort of uh, spices if you eat their food you can feel like the same taste in the other one if i make the dal if i make the alu gobi so you will find a different taste in it i'm going to be talking to sulin who's actually been working how long have you been working here for 32 years how come you liked indian food because over 30 years ago that must have been very different in taiwan my father is cook we, before he owned one small restaurant and he always cooked different food for us. What's the difference in the spice between like Taiwanese food and with Indian food? No, because Taiwanese food is spicy means it's spicy, means it's used chili. But the mas Indian chili, that means we use so many kind of flavors, masala. So maybe you will feel very spicy, but only in your tongue. Actually, it's not go to your throat. Your, and your stomach, but you still feel its flavor. But Taiwanese, they don't understand. If your best Taiwanese friends are going for a Japanese curry and they've never tried this, what would you tell them? I say you must you know, challenge your tongue because we have so many flavor that he will open your tongue and suck those spice in your mouth. What do you think of Japanese curry? Because in Taiwanese, we used to the Japanese curry because of that, so many histories problem but Japanese curry for me is only the sweet not so many masala and his ticket is used the potato and the so many like a fruit like a like apple everything not the, so many masala so for me the not, not so like because the no flavor I need to say if you haven't tasted this curry or have haven't had any authentic Indian curry, then you've really missed out. I mean, 
you really, I would even like to go far, to, as far as to say that you will have no idea what real curry is. Today, I'm at Shidin Noodle Factory in middle of uh, the mountain in Shidin area. The noodles, they need water and flour. And most important is salt. So if I salt enough the figure, you can make the stretch with the noodles. And all plus the old traditional way, handmade. So it take 12 hours to make one patch of noodles. This place is be open for 25 years. Only do one particular thing. This handmade noodles. Now I go test the noodles. So later on, the noodles will come all the way from the tube. Ah, catch it. Wow, look this. Magic noodles. Mmm. Very nice. Second part coming. Wow. Ah, no. This noodles, I never tried anything like this. You can smell. There's still flour in there. We often think of street food as being Asian food, but here we've got French food, which is street food. And you've got this wonderful little shop. The guy makes all the food here by himself in the street here. This is his vegetable tart, and the pastry is just so rich, so incredible. The vegetables just just gently cooked, so they're not too overcooked. And um, the taste is it's so juicy. Or lightly seasoned. Beautiful flavour, just these lovely fresh vegetables, wonderful pastry and this lovely sort of creamy sauce. I mean this is real French food and look, it's right here in the middle of Taipei. Wonderful. You need to go to France, it's here. celebrate today the, the day of the, of the Bastille in France uh, and uh, we have as a French here in this small market very important to have food. Food is very important for French. I think there is something very interesting between France and Taiwan. Uh, it's all about pleasure and it's all about food. Taiwanese love food. Just if you come to Taiwan, you see the number of restaurants you have, the diversity of the food in Taiwan is incredible. It's not because uh, Taiwan is a special place, but Taiwan is, um, uh, from 50 years ago till now, you have a lot of, of course, the, the history of uh, Taiwan, Taiwan food, you know, from uh, 200 years ago, a lot link to the to the sea, because uh, because the sea is the most important here. So we have a lot of uh, seafood, but also all those people in uh, the 1950s who come from all the part of Taiwan of of China and came in Taiwan, and some people uh, coming from those very uh, lot of different region in China, create, recreate in Taiwan the cuisine of their own region. So you have really in Taiwan what we call a diversity of food, especially Chinese food, all kind of Chinese food here you can find. And French is a little bit the same. France is a country which we are a very good location in the world. Uh, we are on the 45 parallel, just where the climate is very temperate. We have two seas. Uh, we have the Atlantic on one side, big Atlantic, and we have another one which is Mediterranean. So for seafood, we have two different seafood, totally different. Also, in France, we have 400 different landscapes. We have very old uh, mountains, very... Uh, new mountain, we have a sea border, very different, some with 
a green, a, a, a blonde sound, or with gray sound. We have 400 different landscapes. And we have f uh, four seasons. The winter, the August, uh, the, uh, um, the winter, the, uh, the spring, the summer. They are three months very different. So we have a huge diversity in France of veggies. We have a huge diversity of different meats, you know. And we have a huge diversity of fishes. So the French food is good because of the diversity of the, uh, the, the sources. So that's what makes the French food so special. It's not the French food is very good because the French people are very smart. It's really because the resources we find in France are very, very, very multiple. It's a little bit the same with Chinese food. I mean, it's the Mr. Brown coffee. Almost 10,000 box sent out every day. Some brown coffee. They even send to Europe, Poland, Czech Republic, and Germany, even South America. Let's find out how Mr. Brown Coffee made. This is uh, our, uh, we call the coffee lab. Okay. All the coffee quality we are doing in here. This is a room we are testing the coffee flavor. So roasting the right color, then cupping in here. Now I want to show you how to cup the coffee. This is very important things. You know when we testing the wine, they are sip and spit out. Yes, yes. Okay. Why? Because our nose is more sensitive than our test. So when we sip in the in our mouth, they like a, a spray a particle to go into your mouth. So I will show you. You you you, you see. You heard That's the sound? That's why they shoot the quick. Because when you have a very quick speed, you can reduce a little bit heat and sped up in your mouth. And you can feel the more in uh, fragrance in, in, a, in your nose. I'm going to try this the fast way. Oh, Not sorry. <laughs> I drank it. Not easy? <laughs> Not easy. Yeah. You feel it. Mm. Yeah. All right. You feel uh, uh, the, like uh, the citric, the acidity inside, like a fruit. This is more stronger. Yes. But I prefer this one. Okay. This, yeah. This is good. Yeah. Lighter. Uh -huh. But this is stronger. Yeah. This is. A... Yeah. I think. So this you good. feel the different? Yeah. It's the it. same way we prepare the coffee. Okay. So even you, you can feel, but. For us, we have to know the quality. How from this green bean into Mr. Brown coffee? Because we import the green bean roasting. So we have our roasting plant in the right roasting degree, then go into the extraction. Okay. So we have a very high pressure, like espresso extraction to the very high concentrated liquid, then piping to our line, blend with the sugar, and milk. So when the blending with the sugar and milk, we put it into the can, sealing, and retort, so we get it, Mr. Brown. Okay. The next time, if you drink Mr. Brown's coffee, we realize how complex it's made from. Hello everyone, I'm Dominic, the wine and food lover, and today uh, we are in Taipei, and I have the chance to attend the bakery show. Bakery show is one of the, my preferred show with the food show in Taipei because you can find a lot of product, a lot of new tendency, uh, what uh, the Taiwanese like products and also the products that come from Europe or from America or for, for Japan, from everywhere. Uh, here is a competition area. Every competitor will come to show his skill uh, for sugar, chocolate, cake or cookie. Every year's bakery, bakery show, uh, we have this uh, uh, exhibition. The Taiwanese consumer, mm -hmm. they love mousse. So we have uh, the winner of the mousse yes. category. The flavor is really good. You have it <laughs> right away. You don't need to wait very intense. I want more. It's so good. 
So now we try the number two. So this is, and we have, we have the chef here. Okay, let's try. Mmm, 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 different. Totally different. This is more about acidity. If you like acidity, very strong, not too sweet. And also, I like the cake because inside you have the mousse, it's very soft, but you have also the crispy. I don't know what is this, is almond? It's very mad. It's not soft. It's truly crispy. We use the lemon, a fresh lemon to to combine with the juice, and then I use some caramel to have some crunchy or like a crumble to put inside, and with a hazelnut and chocolate. For for me, I love to um, French pa French Paris uh, pastry because they have some different kinds of the flavor inside to make you lots of the creation so sometimes when I uh, when I eat in Four Seasons Hotel and I I, uh, I just for looking but for eating you have lots of the idea inside so it's totally different in Taiwan in Taiwan maybe some of the flavor they think oh it's good but not they don't know the What's the flavor? It's the subject. But in French, they were more stronger than let you know when you put in put the cakes in your mouth, and then you can taste it. And what is the flavor? It's the subject. But uh, in Taiwan, we don't know. So you want to introduce uh, um, the chocolate from Pindong. south of Taiwan. Yes. The, the, the cacao has a cacao. special special species. This growing in Pindong, so the variety. It's a little bit uh, acidity and very fruity. Mm. Mm. It's crazy as uh, the original zone. Yeah. Some people think um, the flavor like alcohol. Of course, it's the original one. So we have um, we have the chocolate in the mouth, very intense, uh, very intense. Of course, it's dry, very dry. Good and sir, very dry. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But it's because it's chocolate. Very nice. This is 75% dark chocolate with cacao nibs. This is also very good. Very intense, more intense in this one. And um, a little bit acidity yeah. in the mouth. A lot of intensity in the mouth. And not too sweet. Just just right sweet. And also this one I will advise more for personal use. Yeah than to use in bakery. To make chocolate is not easy because you need to control fermentation and the hand, because I do chocolate by hand temper. So that's another skill to do it by hand temper. So good chocolate, so good quality and uh, you spend so much uh, uh, effort and uh, uh, your passion to make chocolate. So how do you make the chocolate know about the, the Taiwanese consumer? Or even, uh, do you export? Uh, right now, not export, just okay. in Taiwan. You can see now we are on the show. To let Taiwan people know, we have our own cacao and own chocolate. Um, and the variety is different than the other countries. And right now, actually, it's very rough market. Actually, chocolate is not easy in Taiwan. It's really great. <laughs> It's uh, really fantastic. I love it because it's a, uh, it's uh, I, how could you think you find some chocolate uh, from Taiwan here? It's really a uh, good news. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Pendong box is everywhere in Taiwan. <laughs> Every town has their different flavor. This kind of food have much protein for the traveler. They like, can. Um, um, feel feel full for a long time. At the station, there are many Bandung box store because many travelers need to take the food on the on the train. TR is like in the transportation industry, so uh, when pe people have the need to to travel a long distance, so they they start providing food. Before the 60s, they do not serve 
on the train before the, we have a railway restaurant, and then people will have to buy it and carry it onto the train. So from the Japanese colonial period, it's like the rice ball, wrapping the banana leaf, and then they take it. After the 60s, now we have the the image of the bento. After several years serving in TRA, now when they see it, the lunchbox, they feel nauseated. They do not like because they have been eating so many, and then it's always it's always the pork chop and sometimes chicken drums, but mostly pork chops. When they start selling the the bento, originally they only provided the 60 NT pork chop once. She brought in the the Japanese style, the fish, and also the American style, like the rosemary chicken, and also Southeast Asian curries to the bento boxes. It's 10.58 at Taipei Main Station on a Tuesday morning. In the Taipei kitchen, they are busy preparing bento boxes for the 11.42 express train to Hawaii. The Taipei kitchen is one of six railway kitchens in Taiwan. We prepare 10 different boxes each day here at Taipei kitchen. On an average day, we prepare 11,000 to 12,000 boxes a day. And on the weekend, 12,000 to 14,000 boxes a day. With just eight minutes to spare before the 11.42 departure, the bento boxes are wheeled up to platform four at Taipei Main Station. We're now on the 11.42 from Taipei to Ilan on the east coast of Taiwan and the bento boxes are now being delivered onto the train and here they are, they're still warm and they're going to be served to the passengers. I've lived in Asia for about 22 years. I travel between Taipei and Taichung weekly. At the station in Taichung, I usually buy, buy it on Friday afternoon and eat it on my way back to Taoyuan. And it's always fresh. I, I enjoy everything. I wish it was a little bit spicier, but um, the egg's good, the vegetables are fresh, the meat's always... I've never had a single problem with this one. It's, it's wonderful. It's cheap. It's um, inexpensive is a better word because you it fills you up and um, it tastes great. It's it's always available at the train station and um, it's hot. So you you know when I lived in Japan, they, also, they often have a lot of cold things that are beautiful to look at. But this one in Taiwan, it's. Um, as I said earlier, inexpensive and it's just ready to eat. Japan, the bento box is served cold. So she wants to real know how bento uh, still tastes good when it's cold. So um, she will travel on the, the JR lines and then go all the way to in Tokyo area. She found out that the, the major difference is that they have different kinds. Many, they, the, they have variety. Like in one boxes, they have variety kind of dish but the portion is very little and this does not uh, is not suitable for Taiwanese style because in Taiwan we want to have a big portion of meat and a big portion of vegetables and rice so that we'll feel full. She then studied how to make the pork chop bento and then serve it even it's cold it still tastes good. This is the bento box and it's chicken and this chicken is absolutely delicious. It's been steamed and roasted and most chicken you get in Taiwan is that, um, that steamed boil which is very tough but this is absolutely delicious. Where did you learn cooking? 
Oh, my father and mother is a chef. Most chefs working in hotels and uh, in restaurants are training in, in schools or special universities for chefs. And Bill here is coming out of a, a chef's family. The mother and the father are owning their own restaurant. And Bill is now head chef. So here we are at South Julian railway station yeah. and I'm here with the managers from Taipei Kitchen and the head chef of Taipei Kitchen and we are trying to eat those beautiful lunch boxes. We have a beautiful chicken here waiting to be at. Mmm, <laughs> the smell delicious and um, it's beautiful arranged. The yellow red pepper with uh, green uh, spinach, spinach is it? Or yeah, and the cauliflower. The chicken is beautiful, beautiful prepared. I love the crisp, crispiness of the chicken. Congratulations. I'm surrounded by so many young people, so I can't believe that whiskey is being liked by, by all the young people, girls and boys, and that everybody likes the whiskey. Taiwanese love whiskey very much. A lot of people love to drink some Scotch whiskey. But now a lot of uh, young people, they want to try something different. So I think now a uh, bourbon whiskey is very hot in uh, young whiskey lovers. I'm a big whiskey drinker, you know. I drink every kind of whiskey. I'm a drinker and I love whiskey. Taiwan beer is the nation's favorite. Twelve years ago, Taiwan beer introduced a distillery called Omar, who are producing a wide range of whiskies. I'm here with Chang Yen, and Chang Yen, what do you uh, make Omar whiskey so special? Uh, Taiwan's Taiwan special the taste the and the smell in Taiwan. So uh, we want to make the uh, about the Taiwan whiskey, the real Taiwan whiskey. Uh, it has uh, some uh, Taiwan special, like a fruit, uh, like a uh, flower smell. So it's a very uh, hard and a very strong body. What type of cast do you use? Lychee. Lychee. Lychee casting. Yeah, lychee casting. This is, this is something which is special. Lychee casting is being used by Omar. Is it the only which, one in the world? Yeah. And this is very, very, very unique. Uh, whiskey being produced in a lychee flavored cast barrel. And to give the lychee uh, uh, flavors into, into the whiskey. Oh, I'm dying to try to taste that whiskey. I love lychees and this whiskey uh, gives you a very spicy initial flavor which stays in your mouth for a long time but in the background the lychee flavor develops and the lychee flavor really goes into the back of your tongue. It is an unusual, very unusual type of flavor of a whiskey. Now, uh, the main whiskey is spicy, it's, uh, it's a little bit like Scottish whiskey, it's normal, but the lychee makes it unique. Uh, fruity, very, very fruity. Yes. In the finish. Yes. Yeah. First taste is the rough spice of a, of a Scottish type of whiskey, but then as the, as the flavor develops in your throat, uh, you get uh, the lychee flavor overtaking the original spicy flavor of Scottish whiskey. So it's quite a, quite a unique uh, uh, type of experience. How do you get the lychee flavor into the barrels? We use the lychee liquor in a barrel about one year. Okay. And uh, we put, put, put it out right. and uh, uh, get into the four years bourbon cask whiskey. Uh, and another one year. Okay. Uh, one year finish. Yeah. 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 It's quite interesting. Uh, the lychee liquor uh, combined uh, uh, by maturing in the barrel for about a year, and then the lychee is extracted and the whiskey is put into the barrel, and that creates this beautiful Omar whiskey with lychee, uh, lychee flavor. Welcome to Tainan, the food capital of Taiwan. Today we're going to introduce you 
to the wood burger. They are making a original style wood fire grill of hamburger. Let's go. Uh, he wants to share and make people experience this wonderful way of cooking. One of the big difference of wood burger Muhambao is that they are using longan wood fire grill, and also this is from their Laalua uh, uh, tribe. This is the way they cook their food. This is the way they grill their hand, like their, their the food that they the meat the animals that they hunted.哦,它是用那個三層肉,豬肉,就是整塊肚的部分,然後自己去手切,然後切成我要的大小,呃,我要的厚度。不太需要用太多太多的调味去腌制这块肉，尽量把这个肉的原味以木火的方式熏烤出来，吃到最真实的原味。这样，这个才会。This is the wood burger, right? Okay, so what do you think is the difference with your burgers? Like this is mostly like when I we say hambao, it's like Western America made wall. But this is like La Alua uh, wood burger. What do you think is the difference of that? Uh, uh, the burgers uh, may be uh, maybe thought that it's from the Western, but you know with what he is trying to emphasize here is that he is trying to introduce the Aboriginal style of grilling the wood fire uh, meat, and also he would like to uh, show that. His uh, char the, the char bread uh, shows that it's a different one. It's not like the the American style hamburger. It is the La Lua style burger. If you look at it, it's almost six inch, and I don't know how will I eat it and fit it in my mouth. Yeah. Okay, so the way to eat this burger is don't compress it. You have to eat it from the top to bottom. Mmm, that smoky flavor is on that meat. You should try this. Wow. Lamb chop. Mmm. The cumin is really good and the lamb chops are really juicy. You should try this one as well. Okay, and lastly, we will try the, bur the beef steak. Oh, wow. It's really juicy. Phenomenal. We also tried the chicken. It was really juicy. You know, with this uh, wood fire, all the juice of the meat are inside. He has made the hamburgers as much as like the Western style, but with the original style of wood fire grill. So there's a lot of smoky flavor, the, uh, the smell from the wood, and of course, we will try it the La Alua way. Look what I found, caviar made in Ilan. This is a real surprise to me. Taiwan and caviar, I never would have thought that there's uh, caviar produced yeah. in Taiwan. Yeah. Here's a guy is from Windsor and there are some fantastic young people producing this beautiful caviar. What gave you the idea to start this fantastic company? In our farm, produce the, the caviar for global company for a long, long time. But this year, in 2020, we have a plan to promote the Taiwanese company to the global market. We want to show uh, our Taiwan caviar to the world to show our, our quality. How many uh, Taiwanese people like to eat caviar? It comes from the west. So I think uh, in the beginning, uh, the people, they they, they they don't have the chance to try the caviar. But in this year, Winston just 
beginning. So I think uh, many people would like to try this caviar from Taiwan. Yeah. So I think uh, there will be more and more people like caviar. With all the talk about caviar, I think I must try some. Oh, Olga is serving me with that beautiful caviar. really melts on your mouth. This is my first ever produce, Taiwan produced caviar and it is just delicious. These guys have just done an incredible business here. They started a fantastic new product line which I believe will be a fantastic contribution to the seafood market in Taiwan. They produced the jewel of the jewel of the fish industry, caviar.